This video is brought to you by Squarespace. It is far too late to be making a video about this topic. It's potentially far too late to be making any kind of video, but hey, Spuds, how's it going? It's Jamie. Welcome back to another video of Fazio Channel. I don't know, but welcome either way. I'm very glad to have you here. And today we are back with the bad women's anatomy. Oh my goodness. It keeps getting worse. I feel like every single time I make these bad anatomy videos, they just get more and more bad. We're going to get to a point where it is literally the worst the anatomy can ever get. We've done bad women's anatomy. Welcome back to another episode. Bad trans anatomy, that'll be coming up soon. And bad men's anatomy, we did that one quite recently. I think there was also a bad cis anatomy at one point. Anyway, as I say at the start of all of these videos that are specifically like bad men's and bad women's anatomy, not all men and women have the same anatomy. I myself am a trans man. This is just coming from the perspective of these things are specifically said and this treatment is specifically given towards people because they are women and because typically these are the types of anatomies that women have so that's what people associated with and this is a judgment people make based on that but yes just recognizing that not all women have this anatomy whether they're cis or trans for surgical reasons whatever people can have all different types of anatomy and it doesn't impact their gender just putting it out there so this kind of like very bad misogyny and assumptions about women and just people being very strange about women because they're women Yes. The menstrual cycle determines every choice a woman makes. It's quite extreme. Wow. Didn't know this. You see, during ovulation, a woman's only goal is to get pregnant. Yes. All the time, constantly. Wow. Ovulation means must get pregnant. Of course. How did I not realize this? And during menses, she is sad that she has failed. And how does the woman console herself? Shopping. I know this is satire and this is like a, a fictional thing but it just it's sad it's not particularly funny but it's also very not funny and sad because it reads like it could be true like a genuine real person's opinion wow no Something a little different from my norm today. Pretty stoked on how it turned out. Yeah. It is a tattoo of a woman who seems to be dressed in pirate gear. Uh, we will blur certain areas for YouTube's sake. But really, what we are looking at is just the general anatomy is a little bit off. Very long body. The arms look like they should not bend that way. The perspective is very odd. I can't tell if they are short. Very, very long or just oddly proportioned, like different sized arms then put together. I'm not really sure what's going on. I feel like they were going for like, you know, sexy lady pirate and um, got very elongated pirate. I'll tell you what I do find impressive, the tattoo has tattoos. Tattooception. Honey, after 25, a woman's beauty fades drastically. If not now, then soon every one of you will be in the league. What is the league? The league of what? I don't understand. Is this just someone that's been told a lot that beautiful women are out of their league and they're like, well, soon your beauty will fade and you will all be in my league. I mean, there's always going to be women over 25, but why is there this big thing, like specifically towards women, that there is some kind of expiry date in terms of beauty and desirability and just every everybody gets older, okay? If we're lucky enough, we all age and age Aging is a natural process, it is totally fine, and beauty is totally subjective and absolutely does not fade at 25. And so the older I get, that I will be very near to, I was gonna say 40, not quite. I'll be very near to 30 when this video comes out. I mean, I'm only a few weeks away now, but I'll be like a few days away when the video is released. And like every little stage I get older, like everybody just seems younger. It's like when I was a teenager, 30 seemed old. It doesn't anymore. It seems really young. And now 40 doesn't even seem that old. And I know when I'm 40, I'm going to be like, hell, 60's not that bad, is it? It's all just subjective. Our mindsets change as we get older and there is nothing wrong with getting older. And there's just this massive big thing on women that like they are only beautiful when they're young and it's this high expectations and from what I've seen based on stereotypes women age a lot better than men okay gaslit by doctors UK women with endometriosis told it's all in their head more than one and a half million women in the UK are affected by the painful condition but new study says NHS is failing them how surprising is this not something that women have been saying for a really 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 long time and there's so many other medical things like heart attacks 
are often missed in women because the symptoms are different but we're all taught the classic symptoms of a heart attack but that's just based on men you know and women just kind of get forgotten in a lot of circumstances so no wonder something that predominantly affects women only it can also affect trans men and afab non-binary people of course something that predominantly affects women is just completely pushed to the cut nobody cares about this thing oh it's not really real is it it's ridiculous misogynatomy misogynatomy that's a perfect summary of what this subreddit is about wow brilliant okay on a thread about a four-day postpartum woman receiving no support from her husband and becoming desperate to the point of leaving him who would not offer their partner support after they literally just had a baby four days ago i mean who wouldn't support their partner anyway unless they'd really done something you don't want to be with them anymore and you know you're just like no i'm done with this relationship but who of what she's recovering from childbirth and has a newborn that requires constant care this also being op's first kid means this is all new and overwhelming for her not to mention the extreme hormone changes going on with her right now big big moment wow like super big moment he has responsibilities he isn't meeting because he'd rather focus on his bleep and covered brother than his new family it's time for women to stop having babies unless they are hearty enough to not use it as an excuse for everything well i'm glad that one has the down vote yes um because we we all know that women are the only one that are responsible for babies what the heck no this is just ridiculous the misogyny is awful like i mean i know that's this whole subreddit it does get very frustrating this is what i mean by it it's getting worse or maybe i'm just getting more irate by it but just the concept of like oh it's the woman's fault it's the man that's not stepping up and being a present father and supporting his partner who's literally just given birth oh clearly the fault actually lies with the woman who's trying to deal with all of this after having literally just given birth which is an incredibly stressful thing for a body and a person emotionally and physically and everything to go through is her fault the man can't possibly be at fault here damn some people <gasps> but if you're a woman in a placenta you have no rights if you're a woman inside a placenta you have no rights Ooh, no rights for those inside a placenta why are they, why do they think women are in a placenta what do they think a placenta is where do they think a placenta is what do they think women are doing inside a placenta how do they think that possibly works it's the other way around the placenta would be inside whilst the baby is growing never heard of a woman being inside a placenta but if you're a woman in a placenta the word placenta sounds very funny now age 27 six pounds per month oh i believe this was an advert for life insurance so when you're when you're 27 it's six pounds per month and there is a, a youthful looking cartoon of what i can presume is uh, meant to resemble a woman meant to symbolize meant to signify meant to be a woman and then age 30 10 pound 50 per month do not delay the younger you are the cheaper it could be yes that is true about life insurance the cheaper you get life in the cheaper you get life insurance the younger you will be no the younger you get it the cheaper it is i don't know if it goes up every year does it i don't know i just know the younger you are if you're old if you're old and you've got health problems like health insurance is very expensive but when you're young it's not so much unless you also have health that you know what i'm getting at but then <laughs> the cartoon they have on the other side this little split frame in those three years i do not know what has happened to this little cartoon lady but she has aged a lot in three years this is just feeding into the whole like yes the cutoff for women being young is 30. you know men stay young until they're 80 90 150 they just never age they're always youthful you know it's never too late for them they don't get wrinkles no never ever ever never past it if you're a man but if you're a woman apparently it's somewhere between the age 27 and 30 you suddenly get very very old looking or older looking because we all know that happens mm -hmm. let's just feed into the stereotype that 30 is old but only if you're a woman no hymen no diamond real men don't settle for blown out mm -hmm. yeah but it'd be perfectly fine if the men have been with other people. <laughs> oh, dear God. I hate this subreddit. Holy what the frick. 
No. This person, this is not a real person, this is Photoshop, and this Photoshopped person has zero internal organs in their abdomen. Oh my god. I mean, I'm getting the impression. I've, I've cut it halfway because I think if I show all of it, it won't be allowed. But I'm, I'm getting the idea that these are like underwear that have like a butt padding on it. So it's supposed to accentuate and increase the curvy look. But even still, even taking that into consideration, that waist is very, very, very tiny. Like proportionately does not make sense with the size of the thighs and the positioning of the thighs. There are no organs if that's what's happening. No. Mm hmm I am in need of a little break. So on that note, Spuds, do you remember the cat circus business that I was talking about the other week? Well, I unfortunately yet again have to be the bearer of bad news. My new and very real, very uh, absolutely 100% genuine new venture of running a cat circus is having to come to an end. Understandably, the cats realised that they were truly in charge and I'm just no longer needed. I was ousted as ringmaster by Fluffy. But I still send them cans of tuna. There's no hard feelings. I completely understand. But it is a shame because I made such a fabulous website using Squarespace. I had over 100 sold out shows, but they are now handed over into Fluffy's capable paws. But Squarespace really has been meow-tastic. No, that one didn't work, did it? No, I'm so sorry. But it really has been fantastic. There's things like pre-built layouts that let you use pre-designed structures for specific purposes on your website. This can include things like contact pages, a blog, product pages, and much, much more. Page elements are arranged quickly to create professional layouts to showcase the content on your website. And you can add or remove blocks to create a custom look. This was my page built through a pre-built layout and it includes another perfect feature. Squarespace allows you to add online appointment booking to your site through Acuity Scheduling or linking to a third-party booking page. Making things like taking bookings for kitten cuddling sessions easy peasy kitten squeeze Squeezy, please do not squeeze the kittens too hard. Once you have all your pages in place, or maybe before you can do this as you go along as well, another awesome feature that I particularly love is the asset library that Squarespace has. This allows you to upload, organize, and access all of your content from one place, meaning you're able to manage all your files from one central hub and use them across the Squarespace platform. So whatever your website idea, if you're looking to build a community, if you're an awesome entrepreneur, or if you want to create a new website just for Fluffy's cat circle, then you can use Squarespace to turn any idea into a website. Sharponai's actual Squarespace website that isn't going anywhere was super easy and fun to make. As was the website for my very real and not at all made up cat circus. Mm -hmm. It will be very sad to say goodbye, but it's time for something new. And I would like to say thank you to these particular spuds for giving me the inspiration for today's website. So go drop a comment down below on what you think I should make next. What job should I have? And I might just turn it into a Squarespace website. And to get you started on your own Squarespace website, go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready, go to squarespace.com forward slash jammy dodger and get 10% off your first purchase of a domain or website. The link is in the description box and I can promise it's going to be much easier than herding cats ever will be. All right, I think I'm ready now to go back to the bad women's anatomy. Are we ready? I hope you are too. Possibly the worst case of where are her organs I've ever seen. Well, it's going to have to do a lot to top the one that we just saw because that was very bad. What have we got? <laughs> a practically non-existent waist. Wow, look at that. Very curvy, but that waist is nearly as small as the arms. Like imagine that on a real person, a waist the size of your upper arm. No, where are these unrealistic expectations coming from? This should not be happen. This should not be happen. This should not be happening. This very much looks like a character from Zelda. Is this like a uh, artist impression of Link or something else going on? I don't know if I just missed the point. Am I just making that connection? Are they just a random character from something else that I'm being like, oh, this looks slightly familiar and it's not because the more I'm looking at it, the more I think I'm wrong and let's move on. Right. So again, we're going to be blurring the chest area just, you know, to keep the YouTube happy. But... <laughs> That curvature is quite something. I feel like they were maybe at first going for a centaur type being. And then we're like, no, 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 let's do full human, but keep the same shape, you know, like the little almost right angle from lower back, the longest lower back in history, and then just up. 
I feel like something has perhaps broken. Looks very painful and very, very long. These ones are kind of more funny. I don't know. I don't want to make things deep if they're not deep, but let's just look at the not deep side of this and be like, this person who made this, it say this was like actually drawn by a person. I'm assuming it's not AI. This person who drew this can actually draw. Like, I, I think it looks decent in every other way than the proportion. You know, just the blah, 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 that bit? No. How did that happen? Because even from like the chest to the neck, that is quite a distance. Breast reductions go against God's plan. <gasps> but oh my God, she has to carry those around just for men's pleasure. Shut up. I feel like that's combining what people actually, like, you know, think about someone who has a very large chest. It genuinely can cause issues and there is a relatively simple procedure that can fix a lot of problems and be incredibly life-changing for the people with very, very large chests. And they're absolutely not carried around for men's pleasure. I think this is wishful thinking on the part of the poster of this tweet. I think it's a tweet. Do you have any idea the knee and back problems I get from being a six foot four, 240 pound giant? No. I thought giant was if you were six foot eight or taller. Six foot four is a little bit off. But women love me being big. I don't remove my shins, do I? I feel like trying to compare breast reduction surgery to help people's backs and things is a little bit different to them being like, I'm tall, I can't remove my shins. Nobody's saying to remove your shins. No, and if there were something you could do, realistically do, to reduce the pain that you are in because of your stature, then I'm sure you also would look into doing that to reduce your knee and back problems. Removing the shins is not really a solution, but a breast reduction is. This is just another way of a man being like, I can police women's bodies. I can dictate what women do with their bodies. And I just, I think it's ridiculous. I was gonna say boring, but it's, it's much worse. It's much, much worse than boring. Unoriginal, a partner told me that women and girls shouldn't fart. I had to explain that we have a digestive system that produces gas just like men. Oh no, the women shouldn't fart. No, a woman can't possibly fart. They don't create gases in their bodies, oh my God. Goodness, I feel like this just leads to a lot of women having stomach ache because they've been told that they shouldn't fart. Don't hold it in. It's okay. As Shrek once said, better out than in. Better out than in, I always say, eh, Fiona? Oh, wow. I mean, the, wow. I mean, the, there's definitely Photoshop going on. It's like, let's make the hips really wide and the waist really tiny and the thigh gap and, oh, wiggly arms. I feel like... <laughs> The arms were like probably straight down and then because they've pulled the hips out and pushed the waist in, the arms have just kind of followed the same shape. Yes. Apparently another feature of women is they do not have bones in their arms or they have very few bones or they have flexible bones. I don't know what it is, but those are some very bendy arms. I had to explain that we attach pads to the underwear, not our vagina. I'm honestly just imagining some like cis dude thinking that people put the sticky side of the pad on their body. Wow. I don't know if that was specifically what he was imagining, but whatever he was imagining, it was very wrong. He thought that preferring to use pads over tampons makes a woman immature. Has he ever stopped to think about what he might prefer to use? And if he would like to be called immature based on a preference? I mean, that's very bizarre. Honestly, this, there is quite a few period related posts in this. Yeah, when I was in school, roughly 20 years ago, when there was sex education, and this is also at a point when I was living as a girl, I was 11 and I, you know, I was my assigned sex at birth is female. So yes, that is how I was living at the time because I didn't know trans existed. Boys and girls were split for sex ed. And at that time it was, I mean, I was in the girls group and we don't even know what the boy group learned about, but I was in the group that learned about like tampons and periods. And that was pretty much it. Like literally we were shown a cup of water and a tampon going in. And if that doesn't put you off ever using a tampon, I don't know what does. It literally just went in and went Poof, and it filled the whole thing up and everybody in the room just kind of screamed a little bit. It didn't need to be that dramatic. It could have been explained in a much better way. And putting it in a glass of water, it looked a lot bigger than it actually was, which seemed very, very scary when you're 11 years old and you don't really understand what you're trying to be told. But the lack of education that I think 
like a lot of cis guys have had around periods is astounding not knowing anything i don't think we've had a couple so far in this one and uh, i don't think they are the worst ones so i will save some of that conversation for later but yeah wow a woman does not produce an egg she produces an ovary <laughs> then a man's sperm turns it into an egg this is one of those ones that feels like you want to roll your eyes and go oh my god god but at the same time i almost feel like this is a failure from the education system and like people around this guy not him specifically it's on the right track you know there's like an ovary and an egg and something about an egg and something happening and you know doing things but it's just a little bit off it's like you tried but you get that wonky gold star you know pov you're about to win a debate on female anatomy facts don't care about your feelings i don't care if i offend you and you know that they're gonna win the debate not because they're right because they'll be very very wrong but simply because they're men i never rent to single mothers or all women for that matter because i don't want period blood sprayed all over my units maybe you shouldn't be allowed to rent anything to anyone just just to take everything take all your units away from you and give them to the single mothers that's what should happen mm -hmm. tighten tone and improve the delicate female than that to me are they using hair scrunchies to show what i think they're going ask about the beautiful blossom treatment sublime aesthetic professionals effective and safe holy crap this is awful no how did she move where her hair was growing from news just in women can change where the parting of their hair appears it's like magic edible vagina deodorant Oh, no, no, um, no, in tiny, tiny writing, it says results may vary based on individual, there is no guarantee for specific results, it's a pill, or it's a capsule, I don't think you swallow the pill, this is not necessary, it really isn't, and I'm also questioning, because it's in like a capsule form, do you eat it, I can't tell, what do you do with it, I had an initial assumption, and then I saw edible again, and I was like, are they telling you that you take a pill, and it affects how things smell down there. I'm horrified. He didn't believe catcalling happened, or at least was really rare because he had never seen it happen and he hangs out with girls all the time. <sighs> I mean, like, surely someone would have told him it happened. I don't know. Like, I'm glad he doesn't see it because it indicates, one, he doesn't do it. Like, if he doesn't believe it really happens, it, it must mean he doesn't do it. And the guys he does hang around with also don't do it, which is a couple of positives on this. But also, like, just believe women when they tell you that they're having this experience you know i, I cat calling is a very well established thing that happens to women and like <laughs> just some guy being like well i as a man rarely see this i don't really think it happens and if it does it's really really rare because i don't see it it's like maybe try saying that sentence a few times over and then like listen back to yourself saying it and have a think because there is a deep flaw in that i the man <laughs> do not witness this women can't hold their menstrual fluid in like you do with urine at the time i explained this we were in our early 20s and he was well educated vel sorry and he was well educated it's because it says very underneath so i was like vel he was well educated with a college degree he's also very very intelligent i was utterly gobsmacked he didn't know this this is such a common thing i'm seeing with these kind of posts that genuinely so many cis men believe that people can just hold in their period just like choose it's not a tap and even if not that there is you can absolutely not control the flow it comes out or it doesn't come out but even if there were some level of control try holding your pee in forever try holding your pee in for like more than an hour after you're desperate try holding a poop in for a long time why is there still this kind of expectation of like oh well you should hold it in holding anything in is still really uncomfortable that's not a solution it's it's one completely impossible and a very wrong thing to assume that can happen but two 
even if there was any possibility it could happen, that's still a really, really uncomfortable thing to suggest people do. If you gotta pee, you gotta pee. And why would there be an expectation to hold a period in? I had to explain to my boyfriend, who was very much annoyed by the fact that my period came and went as it pleased, that I can't just manually regulate it myself to make it punctual each month. Munch. <laughs> punctual each munch. Don't you think people would make it dot on time? Oh, um, yeah, I'm going on holiday this week, so I'm definitely gonna book the period to happen the week after I get back. Just so that, you know, I've got some nice time, have my holiday without the period. Well, wonderful. That would be great, wouldn't it? If it could just be like, oh, go off. Oh yeah, now you come back on, it's very convenient right now. I've uh, just booked my annual leave, so I won't need to take any sick days off work. I won't get shouted at by my boss, because, I mean, if a boss shouts at you for needing to take time off because of a period-related thing, then they are a very crappy boss, but there are a lot of crappy bosses. It was such an experience, for sure, it made me realise I indeed should have sued my period for being so unreliable. How dare it! Oh. How dare it, indeed. And that's everything for today, and I'm quite glad, because I think that's all I can deal with with today. Thank you so much for watching. As a reminder, do go click the link in the description box to check out Squarespace and please go suggest what I should do next. I've been an artisanal cheese carver. I have been a cat circus ringmaster. What am I doing next? Buds, thank you so much. And think about giving the video a thumbs up and commenting whatever you want as well if you'd like to. And as always, I'll see you next time. Much love. Thank you so much for watching. What am I saying? Goodbye.